Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you the best way to spend your first 100 million GP for 2019. So inspired by Munsel Zunki, I decided to create a more up-to-date version of this. I've been requested this video a lot, so what better time to post it than now? If you need some money making guides, then I do have a full playlist for this, which I'll leave the link in the description. Here is the disclaimer before I start. Now 100 million GP is not a lot of money in today's day and age, so don't expect some major upgrades. This is meant for beginner budget gear. It's generally intended for getting you basic combat and slayer gear. I mean, don't expect to kill bosses with the items you get, okay? The third criteria is that this is based on immediate impact, because it's really important to manage your money early on. I mean, there are some nice upgrades like Onslaught for example, which will benefit in the long term but they won't benefit you right away. This may not work perfectly for everyone, as some people have a different style of play which I truly understand, but overall this is just completely my opinion. Alright, to start things off, we have the starting gear. Obviously, in order to train combat, you need low and mid-level combat gear for all three combat styles. For the tier 40 weapons, I have Mystic Air Staff, Dual Wield Adamant Crossbow, and Adamant Halberd. Then for the tier 40 armors, I have Split Bark Set, Green Dehyde Armor, and full adamant armor. I know what you might be thinking, well Tony, isn't power armor better than tank armor? And you're right, it is, but power armor is not needed at the lower levels. Getting tier 40 weapons and armor will cost you under 100k. For the next upgrade, we have Blood Amulet of Fury. The two items required is a Blood Necklace Shard and an Amulet of Fury. While AD crafting is required, but this is assistable so you can just go to World 2 GE or something like that. Okay, this has a high upfront cost at first, but it's very essential for combat training and slayer. In fact, this is your best healing source before you get soul split. It lasts around 20 to 25 hours before it degrades, but you can repair this for under 1 million GP. It might sound like a lot at low levels, but you can definitely make more than 1 mil in this many hours. Unfortunately, while you cannot sell this item, it is still a nice item to keep. What's really amazing about this amulet is training abyss at the low levels. Now I do have a guide for this and I'll leave the link in the description. To get both pieces, it will cost you 8.5 million. The next section I'll get into are the upgrades for each combat style. Unfortunately at this point, you're not going to afford tier 90 weapons. One of the common mistakes I see people doing is buying the armor upgrades before they get the weapon upgrades. Trust me, you don't need higher tier armor until you get to higher level bossing. Here are the budget magic upgrades. Personally, I like to use two-handed magic weapons over dual wield because you don't have to cancel concentrated blast. In this upgrade order, the first thing I have is Guthic Staff, which is a reward from Mage Arena, then Staff of Light or you can get the 150 quest point weapon which is called Vanquish, and finally the optional upgrade is Staff of Limitless Air. Once you combine the components for the Staff of Limitless Air, it becomes untradeable and degradable but obviously you can repair this. Unfortunately, this item isn't in a very high trade volume. So if you want Staff of Limitless Air, it will cost you 11.2 million, but if you really want to stick with Staff of Light, it will only cost you a measly 1 million GP. Then we have the Corruption Blast ability, and you're gonna buy the Mass Cap Ability Codex in order to unlock this. This is a very powerful multi-target bleed ability, and you have no idea how amazing this is. This is actually a game changer for combat training, slayer, and even bossing. So as soon as you reach 70 magic, I strongly suggest you get this. I mean, it will cost you 17.5 million though. Next up, we have the range upgrades. You can alternate between dual wield and 2H weapons, but dual wield has slightly better damage. In this upgrade order, I would start with Elder Shortbow which is tier 60, then Black Salamander at tier 70, then tier 75 for Vanquish, and finally Royal Crossbow at tier 80, or you can get the Zarite Bow. You could also try getting Shadow Glaives which is tier 85, and this will cost you 15 million. For Royal Crossbow, you have to brandish this at Queen Black Dragon, but this can be done in practice mode. If you don't want to go through the hassle of brandishing, you can buy a Zerai bow which costs you 8.6 million. For the Royal Crossbow, it's extremely cheap, and this costs you under 400k GP. The next thing you want to buy is Corruption Shot Ability. Once again, you need the Mass Cap Ability Codex to unlock this. This has the same effect and cooldown as Corruption Blast. 
Finally, I would save around 5 million GP for Chinchapas, which is extremely fast range XP in the Abyss. If you're not going to manually trigger abilities there, you're going to end up burning a lot of these. So while it is expensive, but it's extremely fast to get to level 99 range. Alright, so here are the melee upgrades. The only thing I'm going to emphasize are the melee weapons, and you only want to focus on getting the halberd weapons. They're really amazing for AoE abilities because of the extra 1 square range. I didn't mention any dual wield upgrades, and the reason being is because they are generally less effective for combat training and slayer, although it is really amazing for high level bossing. So this is the order you want to go with. Rune Halberd at tier 50, then Dragon Halberd which requires Regicide quest, Crystal Halberd which is tier 70 and requires the Roving Elves quest to equip, and finally Masuda's War Spear. Some people can continue to Dragon Rider Lance, but it costs you a staggering 33 million for a tier 85 weapon. The Masuda's War Spear will cost you 7.1 million. Now that I've talked about the weapon upgrades, let's get into the armor upgrades. The best budget set of armor you want to buy is the Superior Fremnic Armor, which is tier 65. You want to buy all three armor sets, which are the Skeletal, Rock Shell, and the Spine Armor. After you buy all the pieces, use one Fremnic equipment patch on each of them. You will need 15 pieces for this, which should cost you around 200k GP. Unfortunately, they might be hard to buy off the GE, since they're not exactly in high trade volume. When you upgrade these armor pieces, they will degrade to dust, although it lasts 40 to 50 hours each. I know what you might be thinking, wouldn't God Wars Dungeon 1 armor be better than this? And you're right, it is certainly better and it does not degrade, but you're not going to afford all three combat styles at this point. Buying all three sets plus their equipment patches will cost you under 1 million GP. The next thing you want to buy is the full Slayer Helmet. It requires 55 crafting and 500 Slayer points. When it comes to training Slayer, this is the best helmet to use. The reason I didn't put this helmet at first is because you're not going to have enough Slayer points to craft this helmet at first, so that is why you want to get the other weapons and armor first. Now it's really cheap and it will cost you under 2 million GP. And finally, we have the money for the quest levels. As I said many times, yeah, quests are just way too amazing to pass up on, and here are the most beneficial quest storylines you should focus on. What I listed here are the notable requirements. For the River of Blood quest, it will unlock the tier 78 Sun Spear, which will give you the ability to make money while you're training prayer at Vyres. This proves to be huge, especially if you're trying to fund yourself to train other combat supports like Prayer, Herb Lore, and eventually Invention. Yeah, because of this, Vyres are way too amazing. Now, I do have a Vyres guide without Soul Split, and I will leave the link in the description. Then we have the Ancient Curses quest, and eventually you're going to need Soul Split and Turmoil for bossing, plus it helps greatly for Slayer and Combat as well. Finally, you want to go after Plague's End quest, although getting to Prif isn't fully needed at this moment, because it's not going to benefit you right away from the moment you step foot in there. However, it's still a nice unlock because there are so many good skilling methods at the higher levels, and eventually you'll access Morvran Slayer Master. It's going to cost you around 20 million GP to get all these stats. Alright, so here is a summary of all the upgrades. At this point, you'll have 10 million GP to spare, so just use that on other things you need on your own. These include degradables, death costs, and other miscellaneous stuff you want to buy. Once again, this is the summary of all upgrades, so just pause the video as I'll move on to the next section. Here are other untradeable weapons you can get for free. Unfortunately, they require a lot of time or quest investment, as they're not the most ideal options. However, if you have invested the time in advance, then they can be pretty helpful. So the last section I'll get into are the combat support skills. This is only if you have spare cash. First, you want to get 92 and 95 prayer, which unlocks soul split and turmoil respectively. Soul split by itself is still a nice unlock because the ability to heal back damage without food is really nice. If you did river of blood quests, you can essentially do this for free at Vyres. Otherwise, using Dragon Bones at the Gilded Altar will cost you 45 million to 92, or 60.5 million to 95. After that, we have 96 Herb Lore, which unlocks the Overload Potions. And no, you don't need to go past 96 to unlock these Overloads. I know a lot of you want to make a lot of Overloads, but even a few hundred will last you a very long time. Unless you want to go for 99 Herb Lore or it's double XP weekend, you don't need to make that many Overloads. 
Ideally, using God Banner and Leeching Pulse Cores will make this a lot cheaper. It will cost you around 20 million to get to level 96. Finally, for invention, it requires 80 crafting, divination, and smithing. Now, unlocking this is pretty nice, but you're not gonna get the good perks early on. With invention, you can train this passively with combat skills and make money at certain creatures like Vyres, Abyssal Demons, Serdomina Encampment, and pretty much the list goes on. So this wraps up my guide on how to spend your first 100 million GP. Hopefully with what you have right here, you should be able to make money over time with this. Again, I cannot guarantee that this works perfectly for everybody. Also, I might try to make a guide on how to spend your first 500 million GP as a follow-up video. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I'll definitely try to make more money making guides in the future.